Happy St. Patrick's Day to Butterfield Trail Village. Hi. It's nice to be back. I've started doing programs as well, 2002, I think it was, with a little band called Slum Gullion. My name is Petty O'Grill. And if you don't believe me, I brought my family crest to prove it. She's on a 300-year-old emblazoned T-shirt. It's a family heirloom. <laughs> Actually, it's a replica. <laughs> so the new band is called Dublin Down, and we're named not for where we're from, but for what we're always doing, Dublin Down. Mm -hmm. On my right, my right right, is uh, Mr. Bayard Blaine, mm -hmm. who is one of those looters you hear about. He makes loots. Looter. Luthier, Luthier. Luthier. <laughs> got it right. <laughs> and he, yeah, he's made these fine instruments that he's playing over there, and mm -hmm. uh, I'd be playing too if I could afford them. <laughs> but <laughs> hope springs eternal. Yes. Yeah. And uh, in the middle, to my right, is Mr. Kent Bayet, <laughs> who's a uh, the world's youngest old man. Actually, he's he's not as old I, as he looks. He's more why, than why is that? Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm 47, but I look 81. <laughs> He's been married a lot. <laughs> so anyway, when Ricky called me some three weeks ago about pulling together a virtual program, I was uh, glad to hear it. I said, aye, that's the spirit. It would be too easy to surrender, just to cancel everything, just hunker down like we did last year, but a little too reckless to just pretend things are fully back to normal. But her determination to strategically confront this pandemic oppressor was, I realized, the very quality I most admire in the Irish culture and people, and which we can all celebrate regardless, regardless of ethnicity on St. Patrick's Day, resilience in the face of adversity throughout their long history of adversity. Resilience is equal parts endurance, resistance, and flexibility it's what enabled Bishop Patrick back in the fifth century to succeed where others had failed in bringing the Irish into the fold of the Catholic Church by accommodating and adapting some of their pagan symbols and festivals, of which St. Patrick's Day is one, a spring fling of feasting and drinking smack dab in the middle of Lent. Resilience allowed the Irish of the earliest 20, early 20th century to finally achieve their goal of a republic free from the yoke of the British crown after a much longer and harsher period of colonial oppression than the Americans ever endured. And resilience is what's now going to get us through this pandemic. So talking to Ricky inspired me to make resilience the unifying theme of this year's program. Even the name of our little band Dublin Down took on new meaning, no longer just a tongue-in-cheek Irish pun, like my own silly stage name, Patty O'Grill, but a declaration of resolve. So despite not having played together for over a year, we doubled down, dusted off some tunes that we performed here last in 2019, and others that we didn't get to play anywhere in 2020, <laughs> worked them into a set, rehearsed a couple times to get most of the rust off, and are now ready, we hope, to musically celebrate St. Patty's Day with the resonant folks of Butterfield Trail. This well first, said. Hmm? This first tune, it's about a highwayman. I think I've done this tune every time I've played <laughs> Butterfield Trail very nearly. It's about a highwayman named Willie Brennan, who was caught, tried, and hung in Tipperary in 1809, a, a real character. He and his gang would ride down from their hideouts in the hills into the plains of eastern County Cork to ro intercept and rob the passing carriages and coaches. He was a criminal. He was only out for himself. But the fact that his victims were the rich English landlords and nobles and taxmen made him Robin Hood enough to become as much a folk hero as any rebel. Then we'll follow with a quick little reel called the Monaghan Twig from County Monaghan in the northern border of the Irish Republic at that troublesome interface with British Northern Ireland. Running on the moor, lads. Right. <laughs> Willie Brennan, and in Ireland he did dwell. Twas on the Kilworth mountain he began his wild career. 
And it's many a wealthy nobleman before him shook with fear, for it's Brennan on the moor. Brennan on the moor, boy, brave and undaunted was young Brennan on the moor. One day upon the highway, as with he, he went down, he met the mayor of Cashel a mile outside the town. The mayor knew his features and says, young man, says he, your name is Willie Brennan, you must come along with me, for it's Brennan on the moor. Brennan on the moor, boys, brave and undaunted, was young Brennan on the moor. Now Brennan's wife had gone to town, provisions for her to buy. And when she saw her willy, she began to weep and cry. He said, hand me the tenpenny. And as soon as willy spoke, she handed him a blunderbuss from underneath her cloak. For it's been on, that's my kind of woman. Brennan on the moor, boy, brave and undaunted, was young Brennan on the moor. Now with that loaded blunderbuss, the facts I will unfold. He made that mayor to tremble, he robbed him of his gold. Five hundred pounds was offered for his apprehension there. So he, with horse and saddle, to the mountains did repair. This young villain on the moor, running on the moor, boy, brave and undaunted, was young villain on the moor. Now Brennan is an outlaw on the mountainside. The cavalry and infantry to take him they did try. He laughed at them with scorn until at last it said, By a false hearted woman was he cruelly betrayed. Was young Brennan on the moor. Brennan on the moor, boys, brave and undaunted. Was young Brennan on the moor. Brennan on the moor. Brennan on the moor, boys, brave and undaunted. Was young Brennan on the moor. Highways been song. Beard's gonna sing for us. So if anybody out there is curious, oh, this is a uh, octave mandolin built on a guitar body. So it's essentially the tonal range of a guitar, but strung up like a mandolin. And what about those cockamamie frets you got on that? Yeah, this is a somewhat modern design they call fan fret or multi-scale instrument where you have a, uh, what? where you each string is a different scale length. For it's a physics tension thing. As well as giving it a nice space age look. You know? Okay. Blasting off <laughs> with St. Patty. Jokes. <laughs> Should have had some on hand. So this tune, it's actually more of a drinking song than a ballad now, and it's about a, an outlaw told from the first person. And the chorus sounds kind of like nonsense syllables, but it's actually a fragment of the old tradition of uh, mouth music that uh, is actually kind of imposed upon the Irish and the Scottish both in periods of their history when the British decided they were going to ban the playing of all traditional instruments as being, uh, I guess, s s incitement to uh, sedition and rebellion. <laughs> so in order to preserve the old tunes and to play for people's dances, they had to just sing the syllables. And we're gonna do a few tunes that feature that and this is the gem of Irish poetry. 
Musharigam Durham Day, Whack Fold Daddy O. Captain Farrell in the morning so early They didn't take my fist So I knocked down the sentry And bid a bold farewell To that cold iron penitentiary Marsha Ringham Durham da Whack for the daddy-o Whack for the daddy-o There's whiskey in the jar Play. Take delight to fishing and boating. Others take delight in the carriage gently rolling. I take delight in the juice of the barley. Courting pretty women in the morning so early. My shring them do them die. Whack for the daddy o, whack for the daddy o. This whiskey in the jar, Marsha Ringham Durham da. Whack for the daddy o, whack for the daddy o. This whiskey in the jar. Now, we're gonna hit a tune called the Barmaid. Since whiskey kind of introduces another major theme of St. Patrick's Day, uh, the consumption, the fondness for strong drink is a major theme, of course. It's always been an aid and assistant to resilience because it helps not only endure people, people to endure through uh, periods of oppression, but also summon up the courage when it's time for a change, which is how it was with Seamus and Patty. Patty met Seamus the day after. They'd been out drinking pretty heavily at the pub, and um, Patty says to Seamus, you be proud of me, lad. Last night, when I left the pub, I left my car there, and I took a bus home. And Seamus says, that's a good call, Patty. I'm proud of you, too. And Patty says, I'd always wanted to see if I could drive a bus. <laughs> 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 so this is a tune in honor of the uh, purveyors of strong spirits 
called The Bar Maid, also known as The Maid Behind the Bar. Not to be confused with The Bar Maid's Behind, that's a whole different <laughs> tune. <laughs> Let's try not to go through that. <laughs> I'm going to do a couple jigs since I have this banjo affixed to my uh, body. I'm going to play a couple of my favorite jigs. I like to play jigs on the banjo especially. And the first one is called the Killaville Jig, named after a town in County Sligo called Killaville. The second was composed by Brian McNeil, who's a very famous contemporary Scottish multi-instrumentalist and fiddler. And he calls it the perfect pitch which I suspect refers to the fiddler's definition of perfect pitch, the ability to throw a banjo a distance of 20 feet into a dumpster <laughs> and hit an accordion. <laughs> All right, the killable jig. Pairing a Scottish and an Irish jig together like that, so close together, reminds me of the wedding between a young Irish Colleen 
and a considerably older, considerably wealthier Scotsman. And she's ready to march down the aisle at the church. She notices a bag of golf clubs propped next to the side door. So when she gets to the altar, she whispers to the groom, Angus, why on earth did you bring your golf bag to our wedding? And he says, this thing ain't gonna last all morning now, is it? It's a good wedding joke there. Okay, yeah. All right, the Irish Isle is smaller in area than Indiana, but it's got a coastline longer than California's, which of course means that the Irish people are intimately bound to the sea, though mainly as fisher folk. Never raised in, in Navy or built large fleets of ships on their own. Still, there was ample opportunity for an Irish lad with big seafaring dreams to go to sea under a number of flags. And this song is a sort of a sea chanty, celebrating the maiden voyage in 1812 of the Scottish whaling ship, the Diamond, into the dangerous waters of the Greenland Sea, where seven years later, she would linger a little too long in the late season of the whaling grounds and get caught and slowly crushed by the late season ice, though the crew survived. We'll follow that with a Scottish reel by the great fiddler Davy Arthur called, appropriately enough, The Howling Wind. It has other names like Tamlin and the Glasgow Reel as well. All right, the Barney ship. Are you ready, lads? Put that cheat sheet up here. Diamond is a ship, my lads, for the Davy Strait she bound. Her keel is all garnished with bonny lasses round. Captain Thompson gives the orders, sail the ocean wide. When the sun never sets, my lads, no darkness fills the sky. And it's cheer up, my lads, that your hearts never fail. The bonny ship, the diamond, goes a fishing for the whale. Well, on the quay at Peterhead, the lassies gather round. Shawls pulled about them, and the salt tears running down. Don't you cry, my love, or you'll be left behind. For the rose will grow on Greenland's ice before I change my mind. And it's cheer up, my lads, that your hearts never fail. The bonny ship, the diamond, goes fishing for the whale. Health to the resolution, likewise the Eliza Swain. Here's health to the battles of Montrose and the diamond ship of fame. Wear the trousers of the white, jackets of the blue. We return to Peterhead, we'll have sweethearts anew. And it's cheer up, my lads, that your hearts never fail. The bonny ship, the diamond, goes fishing for a whale. When the green little lads return, the ship full of oil boys, money left to burn. We'll make the cradles for to rock, the blankets for to tear. And every lass in Peterhead will say, Hush, abide, my dear. And it's cheer up, my lads, that your hearts never fail. The bonny ship, the diamond, goes a fishing for the whale. Yes, cheer up, my lads, that your hearts never fail. The bonny ship, the diamond, goes a fishing for the whale.
What's the real name? Howling Wind. What is the Howling Wind? Next, we got a song over 300 years old, probably a three and a half century old tune about conscription, I guess, the forcible abduction of the British press gangs of young Irishmen, in this case, from the man's very honeymoon bed to break in. I need my poor man's harmonica to do this tune with. My, my poor man's accordion, excuse me, is a harmonica. Yes, say, what is a poor man's harmonica? A <laughs> <laughs> poor man's harmonica. <laughs> it's mouth music. <laughs> definition of an Irish gentleman is someone who knows how to play an accordion but prefers not to. Which is not why I play the harmonica. I don't play the accordion and I don't pretend to be a gentleman. Thank the Lord. But sometimes it says gentleman on the door and I go in anyway. So this is a song told from the, the viewpoint of the hapless bride whose uh, husband is abducted by the British press gang on their honeymoon evening. And uh, she, uh, her main concern is that he might uh, go overseas, discover a wider world, and uh, never return to her. And she thinks she has visions of a tropical paradise for some reason, probably getting it confused that, that Holland is not where he's going, but actually the Dutch Antilles, the Dutch West Indies, where a lot of fighting was going on at the time. And so um, the tune is called The Lowlands of Holland, which I got from the singing of the great Dolores Keene. And he stood at our bed's head, saying, Arise, arise, you married man, and come along with me to the lowlands of Holland to fight the enemy. place of residence where a soldier could remain, where the sugar cane is plentiful and tea grows on each tree. I never had but one sweetheart and now he's far away from me. sore lament for there's men enough in Galway for to be your heart's content if there's men enough in Galway alas there's none for me since cruel winds and stormy seas have come between my love and me Fair, and never will I marry 
until the day I die. Since the lowlands of Holland come between my love and I. English feel to it, it's in a, a minor, not a modal key, but it's a, kind of a British tune from the north of Ireland called Coleraine after the tune, after a town, a tune named after a town, Coleraine. All right, Kent's going to stay on the bones for this next set of hornpipes, I believe. Hornpipes. Hornpipes. We finally get around to hornpipes. I guess whiskey in the jar was that tempo. I'm going to introduce now the oldest and the newest member of this band. Good. Not you. <laughs> it's this 104 year old Gibson mandolin, which I extremely lucky came across uh, last October. One of the few lucky things that happened last year. Yeah, so um, I'm going to do a pair of hornpipes that I particularly like on the mandolin. The first is called Polly Halfpenny. It's kind of a twisty little uh, jiggy tune, or jolly tune, which makes me think Polly might have been a redhead. And the second tune, one of the names of it is called Molly Halfpenny. There's other names for it, uh, longer names, like her long golden hair fell down her back. Her long black hair fell down her back. Her long golden hair was black, and other names, variations on that, but Molly Halfpenny is one of them also. So I imagine that they might have been girls left behind waving goodbye on the pier, uh -huh. or perhaps they were ladies waiting for the next ship to come in. That's right. <laughs> or ladies waiting for the next Halfpenny. After which, then Baird's going to sing the anti-war song, Mrs. McGrath, about a, another <coughs> woman. It's also called My Son John, another song from the female viewpoint from the mid-1700s about a mother whose son came back to, from fighting against Napoleon's army in Spain, alive but not quite intact. And then two reels will kind of tie it all together, the first being the wind that shakes the barley from a poet's vivid metaphor for the resilience and undying Irish resistance to British rule, which came from the fact that after the failed 19, 1798 rebellion, the unmarked graves of the fl fallen Irish rebels on the battlefield were able to be located the following spring because they had been carrying pocketfuls of their meager rations of barley and oats as they marched into battle to be slain. And the title of the second reel, The Antrim Rose, is a metaphor for generally the best looking woman in a particular town, this particular town being Antrim in the northeast corner of the Irish Isle. So another name for it is the hottest babe in County Antrim. <laughs> it's one of the loveliest melodies I know, by the way, in my humble opinion. So first, Polly and Molly Hapney.
Mussin John was tall and slim and he had a leg for every limb. Mussin John was tall and slim and he had a leg for every limb. Mussin John was tall and slim and he had a leg for every limb. Now he's got no legs at all, the boat shot away by a cannonball. Oorum rye, fall little die, whack fall little to me, oorum rye. Well now were you drunk or were you blind to leave your two fine legs behind? Or was it from walking upon the sea? Took your legs from the ground to the knee. Oorum rai, fall diddle die. Whack fall diddle to me, oorum rai. No, I wasn't drunk and I wasn't blind to leave my two fine legs behind. A cannonball on the 5th of May took my two fine legs away. Oorum rai, fall diddle die. Whack fall diddle to me, oorum rai. Of foreign wars, I'll now announce between this king of England and that king of France. Rather my legs as they used to be than the king of Spain and his whole navy. Oorum rai, fall diddle die, whack fall diddle to me, oorum rai. Mussin John was tall and slim and he had a leg for every limb. Mussin John was tall and slim and he had a leg for every limb. Mussin John was tall and slim and he had a leg for every limb. Now he's got no legs at all. You can win a race with a cannonball. Oorum rai, fall diddle die. Whack fall diddle to me, oorum rai. Oorum rai, fall diddle die. Whack fall diddle to me, oorum rai.
Antrim Road. She must have been a babe. It's all right. One year on St. Patty's Day, or in the run-up, I was looking for gigs, so I called a Fayetteville restaurant. And I asked if they were interested in hiring some live Irish music for St. Patty's Day. And the manager says, we've already got it covered. We've hired a bagpiper to play in the parking lot. <laughs> but you can't get around the fact that the, the Scots are inseparable from St. Patrick's Day, especially in this part of the country, where a lot of people are descended from, it's a true story. <laughs> a lot of people around here are descended from the Scots-Irish, which were <coughs> folk who were pretty much forced to move to Northern Ireland from Scotland. They had no love lost between them and the English themselves. But their allegiance was to the Protestant Prince William of Orange, and so they became known as the Orangemen, or the Billies, which once transplanted to the Appalachian and Ozark Mountains, of course, became hillbillies. So it was a nod to the Scots and the Prots. We're going to do a very well-known Scottish marching song, which dates back to the failed Jacobite Rebellion of 1745. All the Scots prisoners taken in the Battle of Culloden were condemned to die, except for one, who was to be sent back to Scotland by the high road to spread the news of the defeat. One of the doomed prisoners sent with him a farewell poem to his sweetheart and homeland, <coughs> which became this epic anthem, now played by bagpipers in parking lots the world over. After which we'll switch seamlessly to a 17th century Irish march called Lord Mayo in which we imagine the souls of the dead prisoners returning to Scotland by the low road through the underworld. Ready to grab. A yon bonnie banks and yon bonnie braes The sun shines bright on Loch Lomond but me and my true love will never meet again on the funny, funny banks of Loch Lomond. You take the high road, I'll take the low road. I'll be in Scotland afore ye. Ah, but me and my true love will never meet again. Funny, funny banks of Loch Lomond. In Loman, where in deep purple hue the hill and hills we view, the moon coming out in the gloaming. You take the high road, I'll take the low. I'll be in Scotland afore ye, but me and my true love will never meet again. Money, money, thanks. Everybody, you take the high road, I'll take the low road. I'll be in Scotland for you. Ah, but me and my true love will never meet again. Funny, funny banks of Loch Lomond. Funny, funny banks of Loch Lomond.
this, the ultimate test of resilience on St. Patty's Day is not necessarily holding your liquor, but being able to hold your own in a pub conversation. <coughs> so these two guys were sitting in a bar, a couple stools away from each other, getting soused for about an hour and totally ignoring each other. Till one finally just up and shouts, my wife drives me to drink. And the other guy says, you're lucky my wife makes me walk. <laughs> you can't argue with that. So now to wrap it up with the song that will probably be played most often and most loudly in the Irish pubs around the world on St. Paddy's Day, which will be, which will be tonight as far as you're concerned. <laughs> You'll be seeing it on St. Paddy's Day and can sing along, clap along if you will. It's called The Wild Rover, I'm sure you've heard it. The ultimate sing-along song. And it's the Irish version of the prodigal son parable. Let me change this to this one. Maybe a little tongue in cheek. Yes, exactly. It, it kind of gives a wink and a nod to redemption and reconciliation, but mainly celebrates the resonance and the rebelliousness of the young re rebel, the prodigal lad. Of course, the difference is that this guy is coming back home with money, so it's a lot. <laughs> it covers a lot of the sins I suppose he may have once com committed. And, of course, you've got to get the old accordion back on. And we're going to find it, uh, or follow it up, ironically enough, with a tune that's called the Teetotaler, or the Temperance Reel, which is one that's found its way into the bluegrass repertoire in the U.S. <laughs> Hi, lads. And this is only water, by the way. Ah, sure. Yeah. Little drops mm. of water. It's an Irish. The word for whiskey is the same as the word for water. The water of life. The Wild Rover. Many's the year, and I spent all my money on whiskey and beer. And now I'm returned to the golden great store, and I never will play the wild rover no more. But it's no, nay, never, no, nay, never, no more will I play. She answered me, nay, ho, oh, for custom like yours I can get any day, but it's no, nay, never.
parents confess what I've done, and I'll ask them to part their prodigal son. And then they'll caress me as oft times before, and I never will play the wild rover no more, for it's no nay never. No nay never no more will I play. ending there. And we're going to conclude the theme of Irish resonance against the English oppressor, no offense to the English now, with my favorite Irish-English joke. It's about an old English noblewoman who had a country house outside of Dublin. And of course, she employed a maid to clean it all up and uh, keep it maintained. And one afternoon, she called from her drawing room, Mary! You come in here immediately. And so the maid, Mary, comes in and says, You rang, ma'am, she says. Mary, look at the dust in this piano. I can write my name in the dust on this piano. And Mary says, And isn't education a grand thing, ma'am? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. I want to thank Ricky again for uh, letting us uh, indulge ourselves and to entertain, entertain you remotely like this and have a fine recovery <laughs> from the, the pandemic, ah, which we, ah. <laughs> now a little physical comedy. Are we gonna play <laughs> one out or are we done lots? We're done. That's what I do, I All right, thank you all. <laughs>